Hey divers, Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba, and I have again something interesting for you. I have everything to do with scuba. If it has to do with scuba, I've got it. And, and one of the things that I collected that I haven't really shared too much with people are my uh, movie posters. Yeah, I have movie posters uh, from going a long ways back. Now, uh, I have movie posters from relatively new scuba movies, and there aren't too many of them. And uh, movie is movies that were made a few years ago, and movies that were made a long time ago. Most of you don't remember. But let's take a look at a few of them. They're kind of interesting. This is the first one. And I brought this one out because this is the first one. This is the most recent. Year uh, 2000, I believe this came out, which is 20 years ago. Let's call it 20 years ago. It's crazy, huh? How time flies. And this was a, 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 a scuba poster. I don't think there's any problem with me calling this a scuba poster. It's not really vintage. It's only 20 years. 2000 is not vintage. But I'm just, I'm just let, me, let me work on this for a minute, okay? This was a special poster for a couple of reasons. It was very, very good. An exciting story. Uh, a true, based on a true story. Uh, Carl Brazier, as you probably know, was a uh, Navy uh, uh, diver, diver, became a diver, wanted to become a master diver and ran into the various problems and he worked and lost his leg and everything else. Finally achieved master diver rating. The first uh, uh, non-white African-American to become a master diver. He had one leg. Yeah, unbelievable. And he was an incredible man. Uh, at the time of this movie came out, uh, the, the dive store that uh, my incredible wife Diane and I had, it, it owned and operated and built from scratch and into one of the most successful dive stores in the country. Uh, we sponsored the first showing of this movie before the official opening. Midweek, we had a large group of media people and special invitees came down to a theater in Toronto. And uh, uh, Toronto, I said Toronto for my American friends. That's how you say it. We say Toronto. But Toronto, uh, the first uh, uh, showing of this film midweek, special people, and uh, Scuba 2000, our store, sponsored this. It was, it was quite an experience. Now, one more added note of interest is that Carl Brazier, Carl Brazier, the, uh, the um, uh, gentleman who we are talking about, uh, the basis for the story, was actually going to come to Toronto and, uh, and be part of that special filming. It would have been incredibly exciting for me personally and uh, also for everybody there. Uh, unfortunately, the gentleman uh, was sick, took sick at the time, and, uh, and was not able to come. And then it wasn't a long time after that when, uh, when he passed away. He was not a young man. But there's a, a poster, a special poster from Men of Honor. If you've not seen this movie, for God's sakes, get out there and rent it. If you're a diver, get out and rent the movie Men of Honor. It's pretty incredible. Okay, we got more coming. All right, now here's another movie that a lot of you will remember. Uh, if you don't, didn't actually see the movie, you probably heard about it because this is a movie that, uh, <laughs> that uh, had a big impact on diving. It's kind of funny because the sport of scuba diving, which started in the 40s, 50s, seriously in the 60s and started to grow quickly from the 60s, the sport of scuba diving has increased rapidly in interest and in participation every year since it started to grow, become popular in the, in the 60s, probably from the days of Sea Hunt, the early 60s except for one year. Yeah, that's right, 1977. It shows, it actually shows in the certification records of the major training agencies, a sharp decline in the number of people who signed up for scuba diving courses in 1977 and into 1978. Amazing, isn't it, what effect a movie can have. Jaws, fantastic movie. Another good movie that you should see if you're a diver, starring Richard Dreyfuss, of course, and Robert Shaw. Fantastic, uh, did a great job, he always did do a great job. And uh, one particular scene in uh, Jaws that was, uh, I wasn't too interested in the scary scenes, but one scene that I always found interesting was when Richard Dreyfuss managed to get the scuba tank, aluminum 80, 3000 PSI scuba tank, to fall into the, sh into the shark's mouth. The shark swallowed it, and he was chewing on it with his teeth at the time. And then, uh, and then uh, um, uh, what's his name, Roy? Schneider uh, shot the scuba tank with a, with a rifle, an old uh, Garand 30-06 rifle, shot the scuba tank, and uh, as, as the, the myth goes, if you shoot a scuba tank with a rifle, it'll blow up. And it did blow up and blew up the shark, and there was all pieces of shark flying around. Yeah, I really enjoyed that part uh, about shooting the scuba tank and blowing up. I wasn't too sure about that, but it was a good movie. So there you go. Uh, going back a little farther now, <clears throat> 1977, I'd appreciate that's 45 years ago. Right? Roughly 45 years ago. So we're going back. We're moving back. Let's keep going. Uh, over these next three or four posters, 
you will, you will begin to understand why in the 50s and 60s, when I started scuba diving, why scuba diving was not the sport of choice for normal people, for conservative people, including my parents, by the way. My dad was dead set against it, but <clears throat> my mother was a little more forgiving, and my mother actually drove me to my scuba course for 26 weeks, every Tuesday night in the wintertime, 30-minute drive to the next city and date with scuba course. But at that particular time, the 50s and 60s, scuba divers were considered, well, suicidal certainly risk takers. And you'll begin to understand why as you see these next few posters. In every movie poster prior to, oh, 1965, every movie poster prior to that, there was always a shark, there was always a diver trapped in a shipwreck, there was always a diver, his lungs were blowing up, a moray eel, a stingray, there was always something that was to killing that diver. The divers were toast, toast. Now there also always happened to be <clears throat> a very attractive girl, in the movie, but that didn't change anything. Divers were suicidal, and it was pretty funny. And here's a typical example. Uh, uh, Vincent, Vincent Price, you remember Vincent Price? Scary guy, yeah, yeah. Uh, he starred in this movie and some other actors and actresses you may or may not know. Tab Hunter, uh, my wife Diana knew her. And um, uh, Edgar Allan Poe actually wrote uh, this story from one of his books, City in the Sea. And uh, this is another beautiful poster. And you can see down here the monsters down here and the divers and the undersea sea and, and the scuba diver and everything. Pretty scary stuff. And this poster is from, uh, this is from 1965. So we've gone back another 10 years. And so now we're talking, where are we? 55 years ago, then right? roughly 50 or 65. So that's uh, 35 and 20, 55 years. We're getting close to 55 years ago. Unbelievable. Vintage movie poster. War gods of the deep. Okay, more coming. You remember this one, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, a classic, literally a classic piece of literature, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And in 1954, they made a movie, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And of course, they had all the usual characters, Captain Nemo, the Dabadoo, and everything else. It was, it was a great movie. If you haven't seen it, you should, you should get it. It's a Walt Disney movie. So you know it was quite well made. Now, it, it, so now this was in 54, that's now 65 years ago, just about, almost 65 years ago. And uh, guess what? One of the actors is still alive, Kirk Douglas. Yes, he's an old man, obviously. His son is an old man. But uh, Kirk Douglas is still alive. Unbelievable. James Mason, well-known actor. Uh, Peter Lore, very, very well-known actor, the guy with the bulgy eyes and so on. But anyway, they made this fantastic movie called 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. This is an original movie poster from that, in mint condition, I should tell you, this, uh, this movie poster. This is called a lobby card or a lobby poster. These were put up in the lobby of the theater to get the audience all excited before the, uh, before the show started and uh, also uh, uh, when they came to visit. So 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, an incredible story by Jules Verne, of course, and uh, made into a movie uh, by Walt Disney, starring Kirk Douglas and a great a great uh, underwater vintage scuba movie, 65 years ago. My goodness gracious. The movie poster looks a lot better than me. <laughs> okay, here we go, another one. Now, this is pretty neat. Reap the Wild Wind. Now, this goes back a while. This is, what, 54? Uh, 1954. 1954 again, same year as 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Uh, 1954. And this is a classic vintage movie poster. As I said earlier, in every Hollywood movie prior to about 1975, every movie prior to that, uh, the, diver, the diver was eaten by some crazy animal or got trapped in a shipwreck or his lungs blew up or somebody killed him or something, and there was a beautiful girl. Watch. Scuba diver or diver. Giant octopus. Now, this is a big sucker. He's already got two hard hat divers in his arms, and he's, uh, you know, and he's laughing about it. Look at the knife on this guy. The knife is as long as his arm. Okay, so divers being killed and a good looking guy down here by the name of uh, John Wayne, somebody called John Wayne, and over here a great looking girl by the name of Susan Hayward. I don't know if she's related to the reader, but uh, nothing wrong with it. So this is a Cecil B. DeMille. Now if you know anything about Hollywood, you know that he was a big, big name, big, uh, a big producer of movies, and uh, his mighty spectacle Reap the wild wind, and it was in color. Think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And man against giant sea monster, 50 fathoms down, right? Fathom is what, six feet? So 300 feet. Six, uh, 300 feet down. Don't think so. But anyway, 
incredible movie. I've not seen this movie. I've tried to find this movie. It's a tough one to find. I will one day find it. I would like to see um, uh, Susan, I mean, uh, John Wayne in this movie. It'd be kind of neat. Okay, here we go. Another one coming up. This is it. This is the last one today, 1953. Now, do the math. You're giving me a hard time because I, I, I can't do it. 53 to 2018, 65 years. Am I right? Whatever. It's old. This is a beautiful old poster, an original old poster, uh, um, lobby card. They used to call these lobby poster. Uh, City Beneath the Sea, absolutely fantastic. Color, by Technicolor, by the way. The first great story of the lost world at the bottom of the sea, starring Robert Ryan. You may know him. I don't know this lady. Anthony Quinn. Anthony Quinn, absolutely. Famous, famous actor, starred in hundreds of fantastic movies. And uh, Susan Ball, I don't know her, but she can definitely stay in. And uh, I don't know what else is on here, but uh, that's about it. But let me point out once again why scuba diving in those early days, vintage divers, were considered risky. Watch, okay? What did I say is in them? Divers, right? We've got divers. What's happening? Divers being attacked by sharks. This guy is falling. I don't know what his problem is. He's got a big chest full of gold. Maybe this octopus arm here is giving him a hard time. He should put his faceplate back on. This diver over here is, uh, I don't know what he's doing, doesn't look too happy. There's a crack in the ground. Obviously, the ground is cracking open, going to eat up some divers, a big fish. And over here, is, there's another diver who is uh, screaming because uh, the wall and his big steel bell is about to fall on him as the shipwreck falls over as well. So there you go. You see, if you're a scuba diver, you're toast. I mean, why would you do that, right? Well, obviously, because, as I said, there also has to be, always has to be a beautiful girl. And there she is. Vintage posters. I have lots and lots of these. I hope you enjoyed some of those. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pull a couple more out sometime and share some more interesting stories. Your job, if you should de decide to do this, <laughs> is to get these movies. They really are great to watch, these old movies. A lot of fun, particularly if you're a diver. Okay, guys, that's it. Ali Pierce Vintage Scuba. I hope you enjoyed some of my vintage posters from the old scuba movies. See you soon.